Hi friend, it's Hunter from Interactive and in today's video we'll walk through how to create this displacement effect using Blender and Photoshop. So one of the reasons why I create displacement using Photoshop is because I don't have to model all this detail and it will take a really long time for me to do so when I can just create a map like this inside of Photoshop quickly and easily and I can also have the ability to change this depending on updates for clients. So let's say a client wants an update and they're saying that these spikes are too sharp on the edges. I can actually go into Photoshop and alter that quickly and easily. Whereas if it was part of the model, it would be really hard to do so. If you're new or an intermediate user of Blender, chances are you don't know all the shortcuts and you're going into menus constantly to use the tools that you want to use. So I've put together a hotkey PDF so you can pick and choose the shortcuts you use day to day and implement them to help speed up your workflow inside of Blender. You can download this PDF down below for free at the link in the description. Let's move on to the video. So let's take a look at how this is set up. In the last video, I showed you how to export a UV map and we'll need this map for this video. So what I'm going to do here is I will open up Photoshop and we'll set it up here. So let's go and delete the UV maps. X. So this is what the shape looks like without a, U, a displacement map here. And the displacement map will go straight into displacement here. Now there are a few settings that I will adjust here for later and I'll show you how to set it up properly later on. Let's jump into Photoshop and set up this file. So let's go create a new folder and we'll keep it 2000 by 2000. I'll keep my resolution fairly low. Now I usually work at higher resolutions than this. I will go 4K textures, so over 4000 and 96, something like that. And I keep it in RGB. Now, if you're working with real world clients, you may be working with real labels and they may come in CMYK. However, it'd be best to put them into RGB just for what you're doing in Blender. And I'm okay with whatever setting is over here, 32 bit. It just gives us a really good color range here. So let's then go ahead and create that. So we've set up a file. Now let's walk through some things with a displacement map. So if I go back in Blender, the way the displacement map works is uh, with values. So basically the white here is a value of one. And that means that it is max height and black is a value of zero, meaning no height at all. So we can use gradients to create this in between that Blender can create a bump using this data here. So the white is the highest point and it'll fade off to a low point. So what I'm going to do here is I usually set up with a 50% in the background so that I can indent it if I want to. So 50% is sort of this midway point. Just keep in mind that this will expand the shape a little bit and this may not be very good if you need very specific measurements for your bottle. So in this case, I'm going to use a black background and I think I'll just create a 50% raise with this white here. So let's jump back into Photoshop. The first thing you will need is displacement or your UV map, sorry. So we exported a UV map in a last tutorial. This one's a bit different to what we did. Let's scale this up using Alt or Option. Hit Enter to apply that scale. Now the next thing I need to do is actually bring in a mask. Now if you want to know more about setting up the labels ready for Blender, so in here we have all these layer masks going on. We have all this shading going on here. If you want to know a little bit more about how this works, 
then drop a comment down below, ask any questions you would like, and I'll see if I can do a video or just answer your comment to help you out a bit. So we'll need a mask for this to mask out this area here. So let's go back into Photoshop and I've already created one. You can create this with the file that you've been provided or that you've created. Let's scale this one down like so. This looks like a really good size. And now what I want to do is actually mask this one out. So the issue with this one currently is it's a smart object and also it's got a white background, which I don't want. So what I'm going to do is go control or command A, select everything, control or command C to copy that. I'll select this shape and I'll just go ahead and add a mask. Doesn't matter if you've still got the marquee or the marching ants going around. Now we need to enter this mask. So what I'll do is Alt or Option click on the mask. That will open up the mask and now I can go Control or Command V to paste in what we copied before. And go Control or Command D to deselect the marching ants, make them go away. And now what I can do is Alt or Option click here and go back. So now what's happening here is we have got the mask the wrong way around. So what I can do is select the mask and I just go into it by alt clicking and I just go control or command I to invert that. And then I can alt click back onto the main layer here like so. And if I deselect the layer, this is what it should look like now. We'll also need to duplicate this layer. So let's drag this, pop it down there, right click, rasterize it. And I just want a copy of this so that I can work on it later if I ever need to. Now let's select the mask here, right click, apply the layer mask. And that means we've got a transparent rastered layer here. And if you wanted to, you could convert this back into a smart object and Later on, we'll add a Gaussian blur. Next, we need to set up our rectangles. So let's go to the rectangle tool. I'm just going to hold shift and draw out a little square up in the corner here. Now what I can do is I wanna get rid of the fill over here in properties panel. You can also open it up over here under properties. Go to the fill here. Hit none, hit none on fill and stroke. And so now our shape has disappeared. So what we want to do now is actually apply a layer style to it. So if I double click on the layer here, double click it, it brings up this option here, layer styles, and I can go down to the gradient overlay section here, check it, select it, and my settings are all set up for me, ready to go. So what we need is we need a blend of normal. We need an opacity of 100%. Let's select the gradient here. You'll need a white value here at the bottom and another white value. You can change it using this. Just drag it down into the bottom. So what I'm going to do here is in this case, I think I'll put white, uh, maybe something like 60. 60% in the HSB on the B. So if you remember our values, we're not going max on this one here. So I'll do that. And up the top one here, you'll need 100% on the left side and zero on the right side. So it fades off to alpha from 60%. Let's hit OK. You'll want to change this from radial, or it'll be set on linear, down to diamond. So we create this diamond shape, and we want to adjust this scale here. So just bump it up, move it around, and we can adjust this a little bit later. Let's hit OK. Right click, convert that to a smart object. 
Now what I can do is group this. So I'll put this one in a group. We'll call this detail. Now, when we do this, we have to duplicate this a whole bunch of times. So I need to be able to see it. So let's hide that UV here. All right, so before we start duplicating this, I need to change something here. So I need to add in an adjustment layer, a solid color adjustment layer. Let's drop this down to black. And it should be here somewhere. Gone to the group. Let's drop this down below everything. So now I can see this shape really well. So what I want to do now is actually start editing this. So I'm just going to select all these shapes here. Hit the lock here. Let's select this one. We can go Control or Command J and start moving this. Now we want to make sure that we are snapping this correctly. So if I select both of these now, holding Shift, I can uh, duplicate these using Control or Command J. But I'm just making sure to snap them all together. So now I can just select them like this. Drag it down. Now I do want my UVs turned on. So I can see the layout I need to fill. And we'll just continue selecting everything, duplicating it, and making sure that it all gets snapped together correctly. All right, so that's worked out. I can close the detail layer. I can drag this layer here above the detail. Let's unlock some of these now. Now the next thing I want to do is hide this layer here. Let's add a filter Gaussian blur. And we'll take a look at this. I'll just scale it up to something like this. That's nice blur. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is go inside here. So we've still got a shape here. And I want to blur this a little bit. So I am going to maybe duplicate this. Hide this one. We'll go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'll convert it to smart object. Let's add maybe two pixels. Hit OK. And I could also add a black layer behind this. Just to have a look. See what it's doing. So let's zoom in. So now I can really edit this. So I could say maybe let's go 1.5. Let's save that now. And now what we can do is go file, save as on a computer. And I'm going to save it in here as a displacement map. Let's jump the number up. Also want to save it as a TIFF and this will just keep a heap of its detail so that I can work with it. So let's hit save. Hit OK. Now one issue I just realized is I've actually left the UV maps on. We don't need those. So let's turn that off and go. We'll be able to just save that over straight over top with a TIFF. Just go Command S, save over. Let's open up Blender. Now in here what we can do is a few things so the first thing i want to do is shift a search and i'll add in a uv map now i'll just go and grab the uv map here and this is created automatically when you create a uv map inside of blender next thing shift a and we'll add in image texture however instead of doing this i think i'm just going to grab, grab it and drag it straight in from our folder just like this 
And now I can plug in the UV here into the vector. We'll switch the color space to non-color. Move this over a little bit. I'll go shift A, add a displacement. Also, if you can hear noises in the back, I apologize. There is Renault's going on just outside my window. Now, what we'll do here is we'll go color into height here. And so now what we can see is the scale here. And we can then plug the displacement into displacement on the material output. Now it's going pretty crazy. It looks terrible at the moment. So that was that option I switched back before. So what we, by default in our material preview down under the settings and surface, you can see here we've got bump only selected. So what we want to do is select displacement and bump. So now it's going to go extremely crazy and it's just to do with our colors inside here and our height, our scale here. So what I'm going to do here is drop this scale down something like 0 0.06, hit enter. Let's have a look at it. So maybe one a little bit higher, 0.1. We can play around with this value moving it up and down. I'll change the mid level down to 0.25. Something like that. Have a look at it. Looking all right. Looking fairly good actually. Now another issue you may come across is if I deselect this. This edge here will sometimes look uh, quite silly. It could come out there pretty stupid if you don't have a decent mesh. So if I select my shape, overlay. If I select my shape and have a look at it with just a single uh, subdivision modifier here. You can see here that it's created this really jumpy edge here. So what you want to do is actually add another modifier. You could bump this up. I just add another modifier on top of this. Another subdivision, another display port, and render of two. And so that just helps clean it up a little bit. For render, you could really, if you really wanted to, push it really high, but you gotta remember that you're adding a lot of geometry which can add to render times. And also have the chance of exploding blender. There's also a lot of other stuff in this file that's been set up. And obviously I would play around with this a lot more. Try to get these looking really nice. And you can do that all in Photoshop. Just adjust, tweak, make this a little bit bigger. I'd probably make this uh, mask here bigger. Only just because uh, I want a little bit of space around that label there. And you'd obviously set this all up in one Photoshop file. So that you can export all the different layers quickly and easily inside of Photoshop for Blender. So you can see here, there's a whole heap of other stuff going on in the background. You set up this label on the bottle. And if you wanna see, or you want tutorials on this, just drop your questions down below. Just put them in the comments and I will try to make a tutorial on them or I'll answer your questions as best as I can. All right, I hope this video was helpful and you're able to implement this into your Blender workflow. And until next time, I'll see you later.